Hi, it's Dave Bloxham with Beyond Guitars, and welcome back. Thanks for returning. We've got a video on our hands today. I've already finished it, actually, and I came back to do this intro because I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork for what's going on in this video because at the last minute, I decided that I was going to ixnay most of the uh, soundtrack and do voiceover instead because the noises were really horrific and uh, just made it easier for me just to take the video. And even though I have some hand gestures in it that don't seem appropriate with what I'm saying, because I said something different when I actually shot the video, uh, it's gonna look a little funny. And I didn't know I made so many hand gestures for crying out loud, but now I do. So it's a little humbling when you watch your own videos, I'll tell you that, I'm kind of new at this. But anyway, at this moment, or point, is it a moment in time or point in time, uh, we are going to move along on this next project right after this. Well, it's good to be back with you, and it's also really nice to have the neck on the workbench finally so we can get to the main the main course here, and that's this banjo neck, neck that needs a lot of help and uh, some repairs. Now, we're just going to take one quick look at it here before we get going, and uh, one last review. Of course, uh, you know, the normal stuff here. We've got some dirt and grime, but uh, you can see the horrendous wear on the frets, and uh, as you go up the neck, they're worn less, but they are worn all the way up past the 12th fret, so we're going to do them all. Uh, the finish, chip, chipping off and, and kind of blistering off the back of the neck. Uh, the back was exposed, the front was not, and uh, the front of the headstock, I really never stripped those completely anyway because, well, then you're into removing the logos and things, so uh, we will just touch up the front of the headstock. And you can see the uh, frets or the uh, finish has been chipped away even all the way down to the heel. Those will be completely covered when we're done, but some of these areas where the finish has been missing for a long time have taken on stains from the environment, and I'm sure that we won't be able to get rid of all the history, but uh, that's not really our goal anyway. We just need to get this restored back to usable condition and make it look nice and pretty, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, off camera, I removed the fifth string nut. You'll see a little hole there at the fifth fret, and uh, so I those half the time or more break when I pull them out. I successfully pulled that nut out. It was a little um, unusual in that it's black. I'm not sure that's original or not, but I will be putting it back in. In this clear bottle of toxic fluid that's unlabeled, uh, I've got some lacquer thinner, and uh, that's here to satisfy my own curiosity. And I like to learn from every job what I'm doing. If I'm talking about it later, I want to be accurate. What I'm going to do here is apply some lacquer thinner to the heel on the neck. It's all coming off anyway, so I figured, hey, I'm going to, uh, this will actually damage the finish, but I'm expecting it to. I'm expecting that it will dissolve the finish, and that will verify and confirm to me that it is uh, nitrocellulose. So uh, this stuff will work real fast on nitro. If it were coated in polyurethane or polyester, it wouldn't do a thing. But uh, I can see already that we've got some amber finish coming up on the swab. And uh, it doesn't take long here before we've got some bare wood on the back of this neck right there already. So lacquer thinner is the kryptonite to lacquer. Don't get it anywhere near your Gibson banjo or other instrument. If you've got lacquer thinner on it, it will absolutely instantly destroy your finish. And you can see right here, that's exactly what's happened. I'm um, trying to do that, actually. So... You know, I'm not going to use lacquer thinner to remove the finish off the neck. Um, I'm not going to use chemicals or sandpaper, a little sandpaper at the end just to kind of smooth things out. But uh, I will show you a tool here I use, and I was very happy to discover the tool I use to strip the finish off of instrument necks. Uh, but uh, before that, I just want to mention that uh, the order of doing things is important. Uh, we've got several jobs to do on this neck. I've got frets to remove, the fret uh, board needs to be leveled, and I've got finish to remove. I've got little repairs to make, and then I've got more finish to apply. Now, what order to do things? At least I know that I don't want to be putting frets in a newly finished neck. So the, the finish goes on last. 
Um, here in this case, it's going to be the first to happen too. It's the first to come off. We're going to be taking this finish off here in just a little bit. Now that I have uh, kind of reviewed what I've got, I've got nitro and nitro is going back on. And I can see here with the bare wood that it is back to a natural color. That's the color of older mahogany. It kind of turns that darker color, but it's not stained. That wood um, stain will kind of take, la I mean, lacquer thinner will kind of affect stain, but it takes a while and it doesn't come off very easily with lacquer thinner. So, uh, you know, I certainly didn't give it any effort or time to take stain off and there's no stain on it. So all the color came from the lacquer and that's the way I like to work. It's the easiest way to go and it looks great anyway. So we've got lacquer, lacquer to put on this in the same way it came off. I'm very happy with that. It's uh, a nice way to work for me. Now we'll take another look at those doll eyes. Uh, they're kind of weird, but they do fill the holes. And uh, I know that what he had in there were some original Earl Scruggs style cam tuners or cam D tuners. As uh, I had made some myself for my own banjo back in the early 70s when I was a kid and uh, followed Earl's instructions in the back of his book. These are much made much better. But uh, mine worked great. I mean, they actually worked perfectly. And I'm sure these work just as well. Mike's dad, who owned this banjo, undoubtedly wanted to upgrade to the new Keith tuners, which are more expensive. But he had already drilled it out for the cam tuners. So since the Keith tuners are all frozen up, why don't we just go ahead and reinstall the old cam tuners, which I'm sure will work perfectly well. And uh, that was a suggestion by one of my viewers. If you read through the comments, you'll see it. And it just made me uh, kind of hit my forehead wondering why I hadn't thought of that myself. Um, they really work great. You know, banjo players or owners are no different than anyone else, in spite of the myths and rumors that are spread all around the world about banjo players. But just like everyone else, when you buy something, you kind of like accessorizing. So, you know, everyone wants the Keith tuners, but honestly, to tell you the truth, these work just as well. They crowd the back of the headstock a little bit, but um, no problem with functionality. They work great, so uh, the holes are already here, and we'll just put them back on this banjo. Okay, now I've got the old screwdriver out, and we're just gonna, you know, start breaking some eggs so we can make a cake. Uh, this is gonna make a mess all over my workbench, but this part won't. Uh, we're gonna try and push out those doll eyes that are glued in there. Really don't know what kind of glue he used or whatever it was, but uh, really they come out very easily. Uh, nice of him to think about the future and use something like that. I'm not really sure what that stuff is. It's kind of a rubbery glue, kind of like this uh, 3M weather strip adhesive I've used before on cars just to hold the rubber weather strip to a door. But, uh, you know, it's not a luthier's kind of material. It's just kind of rubbery. Anyway, they're out of there. And we'll clean up those holes with uh, the reamer at a later time. Now, we're going to uh, remove the finish, of course, on the back of the headstock, but not on the front. Uh, we will remove, try and remove all the dirt and maybe the amber finish on top. But right now I'm going to remove the truss rod cover, not really to adjust the truss rod, but I might. Uh, and I probably will loosen that up, uh, come to think of it, to flatten out the neck. But uh, nice to see that nut is where it should be. And uh, truss rod cover has to come off anyway to get things all cleaned up. So that's the very first part of disassembling this neck. Uh, the nut on that truss rod looks to be in good, healthy condition. Nobody's really messed with it. Uh, sometimes you see them all chewed up. And the worst case, you see them broken off. Uh, but we're all good in this case. So we are really going to break some eggs here and start removing the finish. The very next thing to do here. So let's get going. So here it is. Uh, this is my secret weapon, and I learned about this when I was very frustrated about uh, trying to remove the finish off an old table. And, you know, honestly, I mean, this is woodworking, isn't it? Uh, we're doing the same thing we would with uh, furniture, basically. These tools are called card scrapers, a.k.a. also known as cabinet scrapers. They seem like a novelty, but I'll tell you, as simple as they are, they are the greatest tool for removing finish because uh, when I was trying to remove the finish on that table, for instance, my sandpaper on the sander would keep loading up and I'd have to change sheets about every two seconds. I finally uh, was so frustrated, I really dug into the problem and discovered these. Now, you have to kind of sharpen them yourself. 
there's a technique to do that and I have the tools to do it so I gave it an edge and the edge is right there where my thumbnail is it's on the side you kind of create an edge and then peel it over so you've got this small I mean very microscopic little sharp edge sticking out not on the small edge but on the broad side of the scraper now there's the curve there's the flat and I like to use them all I just kind of switch from one to another now there is a special technique to sharpen a card scraper or cabinet scraper I'm not going into that uh, there are plenty of videos on YouTube if you want to use a scraper like that I would recommend it I think they're fantastic it revolutionized my work so just check out those videos learn how to sharpen them yourself it's the only way they don't come sharpened at all so you have to do it uh, but the result is great here I'm going to um, just take one last look at the back of the headstock and then serial numbers are on there which of course I want to preserve you know originally it almost looked like the serial numbers were proud or protruding from the surface of the headstock but um, really it was the lacquer that had collected down in the depressions that swelled the most because it was thicker there than anywhere else and the heat that uh, damaged the finish kind of bubbled it up out of there it was very odd looking to see that but we'll be fine just scraping it off uh, not removing any serial numbers or anything uh, one thing I like about the scrapers is you have great control and you don't have to take off more than you expect you can go as slowly as you want and um, it's just I mean there's so many great things about it I can't uh, begin to tell you how much they helped my work and I can remove the finish from this neck in about 30 minutes start to finish no chemicals no sandpaper and all you have to do is just start scraping away now sometimes I think the back of that neck has um, the surface uh, we can see the surface lacquer coming off there I was gonna say I think the uh, back of the headstock is a little grimy so we're gonna get through the dirt before we can scrape off but actually we can see the amber finish coming off on the uh, sharp edge of the cabinet scraper and so uh, that's been applied all over the entire neck and here we go uh, just simple as that uh, you just begin scraping it and it goes so fast it's kind of hard to believe but uh, just keep moving around and you won't cause any gouges you can see that amber finish coming off everywhere so I'm um, just gonna kind of give you some different views of this but we're just gonna keep at it eventually I'll put the neck in the vise so I can use both hands on the scraper and um, switch from scraper to scraper just going back and forth finding whatever works best in that spot and uh, we'll try and make very quick work out of this <laughs> I just want to slow it down a little bit here just to stop and explain that uh, the curved areas the volute and the heel where the compound curves are the hardest to get but uh, this is where it takes the most time actually but I like to switch my scrapers often and uh, find the one that fits whatever little uh, millimeter I'm on at the moment and uh, change direction too because the grain is virtually end grain at these points so uh, just keep it moving keep moving around and use all the tools you have and it doesn't take too long now here what looks like a horrible mess at least it was when I took that uh, sliding fifth string capo off all the corrosion that it caused and it stained the wood and the uh, and the binding with the scraper it just takes it right off like it was never there now I could argue with myself all night 
all day which is more important which is more versatile for me in the shop here uh the luthier's vice or the cabinet scrapers they're both infinitely flexible and valuable to me they both save time and uh, make it safer too really for both the instrument and my hands uh, the vice here just lets me free up both hands so i can stabilize the scraper and make it work better for me Now, when I move to the sides of the headstock, uh, I really see another advantage of the card scraper. Uh, and you can really see the flaws the factory made when they used a vertical uh, oscillating sander in most cases on these uh, parts. And uh, what I mean is you, you true it up even better with the card scraper and you can see the low spots where they went a little too far at the factory. But uh, yeah, uh, sandpaper tends to roll over the edges and uh, soften the edges. The card scraper never will. As long as you keep it flat against the wood, it works efficiently and keeps everything uh, really clean and sharp corners. Well, here we're just going to take a look at the whole neck. You can see the finish is virtually all removed. We'll be just touching up a little bit with some sandpaper, and that's going to be it. Uh, the headstock, a little different approach. We will use the card scraper, but a light touch is important. And as I drag it across, I feel a high spot. Uh, I thought that might be a little bit of finish or not sure what, but I wanted to flatten it out. And it left a little uh, bare spot. Uh, it surprised me to discover that I've seen it all, I guess. I've seen headstock overlays of various types. Uh, black headstocks are made in many different ways. Uh, the old way of doing it, and probably the best, is to use a nice black piece of ebony and glue that on. And you can do inlays or decorations on that. And the ebony is glued onto the headstock, the mahogany neck. But uh, the Gold Star Banjos, they use a piece of plastic, which is really jet black, and it lasts forever. So they look really good. I discovered it was plastic by doing all my surgical repairs and things on banjos. Uh, on this one now, I've made a new discovery, and it looks like they have just black lacquered the mahogany. And uh, there is no wood or plastic overlay. And uh, probably least favorite of this one, I'm not sure why they did that uh, Gibson, but uh, <clears throat> maybe that's how they just began uh, shortening the process. But, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, just kind of clean up the uh, little bits of the um, binding here so that they don't have amber on them anymore because I'm going to reapply my amber uh, lacquer. So I've tilted the sandpaper just a little bit so I can get that. And uh, just want to roughen up the surface just a tad and uh, then we will be able to uh, repair the black in the teeny little spots that it's missing and uh, then we will give it all a nice amber coat. The little disc I have under the headstock is something I picked up at the Rockler woodworking store. Uh, it's come in handy for a lot of things. It's just uh, it reminds me of a hockey puck. 
It's all I can think of. But um, it's got rubber on each side, so it helps support things. Uh, it helps cushion things. It keeps them from slipping. All kinds of things. I just keep them on the bench and use them all the time. Well, thanks for joining me. We've done a lot of work by stripping the neck. It's completely ready for a new finish, and uh, we've got a little bit of repair to do on it. Uh, the binding needs some repair. Uh, we've got a couple of tiny spots to touch up on the headstock, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's otherwise in very good condition, so we've got a little bit of work on the neck itself, but not much. Now, I do want to mention that uh, sandpaper that I finished this with, I've pretty well got it ready to go, but it's very important to use a high-quality sandpaper. Don't use the cheap, brittle paper backing stuff you find at the auto parts store or at, uh, at uh, Harbor Freight. Home Depot may have better than that. I don't know. Their product line changes all the time. I got this at Rockler Woodworking, and they're nearby here. They're just, uh, they're less than a mile from my house. So it's nice to have them. They've got some really good stuff. And uh, that's where, of course, I got my little, my little hockey pucks that I mentioned, and uh, some other things and some great tools. But the sandpaper is important. Uh, this is what's called uh, 3M Pro Grade Precision. No slip grip, durable backing with technology found in Cubitron 3 industrial abrasives. I'm sorry, Cubitron 2. I don't even know what that means, but it's good sandpaper. It doesn't load up uh, very, very often, and it's nice and flexible, and it doesn't tear, so um, it does a good job. That's what I'm using today, and maybe I'll find something better in the future, but for now, that is working well. So be sure to join me for the next one. We're not putting on finish. We're going to start on the fret job on this Gibson here at Beyond Guitars. So like and subscribe and don't miss the next episode.